Welcome to the MSAR pilot. This is the ERPO end user training. Part 1 MSAR overview and access. The end user training for the ERPO program is broken down into three separate parts. Part 1 the MSAR Overview and Access covers highlights on the overall program and the structure, as well as access to the portal and how to download the mobile app. Part two covers using the mobile app. And then part three covers how to use the portal, including how to submit DSRs for approval and how to run reports. In this case, we are going to be covering part one, which is the NSAR overview and access. The Federal Highway Emergency Relief, ER, and the Office of Federal Lands Highway Emergency Relief for Federal Owned Roads, ERFO, are piloting the Mobile Solution for Assessment Reporting, MSAR, to streamline the data capture, approvals, and reporting of damages to transportation infrastructure. The new process and technology should help reduce disaster response times, improve situational awareness, and increase data integrity and transparency. Overall, we expect to see an increase in efficiency and a reducing cost for partner agencies and Federal Highway Administration Let's go over a quick overview of the MSAR system. Everything starts with the inspectors that are on site. We call them our mobile workforce. So field inspectors are doing site inspections after a disaster. They have their tablet and mobile phones, smart devices, that have the MSAR app installed on it. Now these devices can be iOS, Android, or Windows 8 devices. And they are able to capture pictures of the damages, and they're able to enter data about the site, as well as data on the damages and expected repairs. Now they can enter all of this data while in the field, whether they have a connection to the internet or not. If they do not have a good cell connection or do not have Wi-Fi, they can simply put their device in airplane mode and that helps you save battery life. And then you can uh, enter all the data, collect the GPS location, and enter everything that is needed for the damage assessment. And then you can submit it up to the server when you get access to the Wi-Fi. The portal, which is the server, is actually on the Salesforce platform, and it's important to note that the Salesforce platform is FedRAP approved. It's also scalable and it's cloud-based, which basically means that your users can access this environment from any internet connection within the continental United States. All of the data is, that is submitted up to the server is aggregated automatically and is made available through reports and dashboards to not only the local agency, but also to the U.S. Federal Highway Administration. This is the overall system, of which is called MSAR, and we will get into more details later on during the program. Let's talk a little bit about the different user roles that are in the system. We have set up the user roles to mimic what is actually happening out in the field. When you're in the field, you have a field user that starts 
the DSR. And that field user typically submits the paper DSR to their supervisor. And then once they review it and approve it, it goes up to the applicant national ERFO coordinator for, and they can view it. And then it gets approved by the division ERFO coordinator. We have created user roles in the system that basically mimic the same real roles. And there's three particular roles that I want to talk about because these three are involved in the automated workflows of the system. The field user, supervisor, and the Federal Highway Regional Coordinator. The field user is responsible for creating a DSR. Typically, we recommend that they do so on a mobile device because it makes it very easy to capture pictures, GPS, and repair estimates right on the spot. So the field user will then upload and finalize costs, and this is done on the portal. And typically, what's expected is that you would add any detailed line items for repairs, attach backup documentation, and then if there's any additional pictures that you want to add or additional PDFs or images, you could certainly add that and that will become part of the DSL package. Finally, the field user will review the DSR using a PDF format to see how it looks on the format that's expected and then submit it for approval. The next part of the workflow is the supervisor. The supervisor is responsible for reviewing the DSR and assessing whether it's accurate and complete. If the supervisor agrees with what's written and feels that that is a, an accurate representation of the damages and the estimates, then the supervisor will approve it and that will automatically be sent to the next stage of the approval. If not, the supervisor can reject the DSR and that'll go back to the field user. And what's great about the system is all the data is already in there and the field user can basically pick up where he left off, make a couple of changes as requested by the supervisor and can resubmit. So it's a very quick process. The next approval stage is done by the Federal Highway Regional Coordinator. The regional coordinator will review the request, ensure that all the his or her questions are answered and all the data looks correct, and then she or he will approve it. Now, if again, if, if there's any questions or any open items, she can reject it, and again, it goes back to the field user, which will then request uh, you know, additional changes, and the field user will submit it back to the regional coordinator. This is one of the key features of the MSAR system. We know that currently this approval process might take three or four weeks because of the amount of paper that's involved, not only completing the packets, but also shipping the packets and reviewing paper is a very time consuming and cumbersome process. We expect that the system, <coughs> by automating this particular workflow, we could actually get the entire process down to less than than a week or so. Before we get too far, I do want to talk about how you get help, particularly when you are out in the field. The first line of defense is your supervisor. He or she has been trained on how to use MSAR and they've been provided Before we get too far, I would like to share with you how to get help when you are using MSR. 
Your first line of defense is your supervisor. He or she has been trained on the different features of MSAR and they are very familiar with the ERFL program overall. They should be able to help answer your questions and if they don't know the answers, then they also have some folks that support them. The other thing that you can do is take a look at the MSAR support site. There you will see FAQs and have a wealth of information on how to use the application and other folks are contributing tips and tricks. So it's definitely a great resource to get help. Finally, you are also able to use the MSAR support email, which is msarsupport at dot.gov. Those emails are reviewed and you will be contacted as soon as possible in order to help alleviate, uh, answer your question or alleviate any pain point you might have. And this is the best way to get help with MSAR. Before we get started, there's a couple of things that you need to have in place in order to access MSAR. And the first thing is that you must be associated with the Federal Lands ERPO program or with an applicant or sub-applicant. You must also be a registered user in MSAR. And your registration must use a valid email address. Finally, you are going to need internet access. And we highly recommend that the first time you connect, you connect using the Wi-Fi. You will also need a web browser, any one of the recent versions of Internet Explorer, Firefox, Chrome, or Safari will be great, and a mobile device. And this could be an iOS smartphone or tablet, an Android smartphone or tablet, or a Windows 8 tablet. The first thing we'll do is access the portal. You should have received a welcome email from noreply at salesforce.com. I want to talk a little bit about these emails. So the system is going to communicate with you, and it's not going to come from some msar.com email address. So make sure that whenever you see a salesforce.com email, that you accept it, that it doesn't get stuck in your junk folder because those are the emails that are coming from the MSAR system. And typically they will come from no reply at salesforce.com. So you should have received a welcome email and if you click on the link, it'll give you a series of prompts to enter your password and enter a security question and then um, you will get access to the portal. Now, the system is going to check that you are the who you say you are, and they will email you an email with a verification code. So before you actually access the portal, you will need to check your email for a verification code, and then you will enter that into the portal, and then it will let you through. There's a couple of things that I want to say about that verification code email. You will be required to enter a verification code every time you log into the portal with a combination score and I access the portal, the first time I will be required to enter the verification code. <clears throat> if I use my work laptop and I use Chrome, which is a different browser, it's going to ask me the first time to enter a verification code. Now, if I go back on my laptop and I open Internet Explorer and access the portal for the second or third time, I will not need to enter a verification code. So I just want to make sure that that's clear. And also just be aware on your mobile device, you will be required the first time you connect to enter that verification code. So you will want to make sure that wherever you are, you do have access to your real email 
so that you can get that code and enter it into the system. Let's go ahead and go through what the portal looks like. I'm opening this browser and I will go to dot.mysalesforce.com, which is the production version of MSAR. On this login page, you will notice on the right hand side that we have the terms and conditions of use as well as rules of behavior. Click on the link to view the rules of behavior. If you access the system, we basically believe that you are accepting the rules and of behavior and the terms and conditions as stated here. So please go through it before you access the application. The next thing to note is that on the left hand side is where you log in. If you are associated with an applicant or sub applicant, you will enter your username and password here. If you are associated with Federal Highway or another federal agency that is related to the ERCO program, then you will click on ADFS and use single sign on to connect to the system. Let's go ahead and log in. This allows me to verify my username and password, and it gives me access to the home screen of the application. So you will be walked through a step of uh, an initial login screen, which will ask you a security question, and it will ask you to enter a password. And then once that is complete, and you get a verification code, you will arrive at this page here. Next, I want to go through how to install the mobile app. The first thing to note is that you will need to have entered your username and password for the first time. So those steps that I just went through right now, that's what you will need to do. And then on your mobile device, you will need to open the App Store, whether it's the Apple, the iTunes Store, or the Google Play Store, um, you will open that, and then you're going to search for MSAR. Find the application that has the Federal Highway Administration logo. It says MSAR, and it's published by the Run Mobile LLC. Click on that, and then follow the prompts to install. Let's go through these steps. This is my iPad Mini, and I'm going to go ahead and open the App Store. And then on the top right corner, I will search for MSOR. And as you can see there, it displays the app. Let me go ahead and click on it. It provides me details and description, so I can click on the little cloud, and that is going to start the download process and the install process. As I mentioned before, you will want to make sure that you're on a Wi-Fi, so this installation doesn't count against your minutes and your data plan on your phone. Once the application is installed, you click in, click on Open. This is going to show you the screen, which is very similar to the screen that we just saw on the portal. So go ahead and enter 
to username and password. Click on the Remember Me, and then click on Login. You will receive an email with a verification code, and you will need to enter that verification code, and it's typically a five or six digit number. And then you click on Verify on the lab. And now you will run into the Terms and Conditions of Use, the Rules of Behavior. And again, this is the same that's on the portal. You will want to make sure that you agree to the terms. If you click Disagree, it will log you out of the application. So let's go ahead and click on Agree. And now this displays the initial login page of the mobile app. Make sure that you have entered a password and a security uh, answered a security question, and that you have access to MSAR. If you don't have access to MSAR, then you will want to talk to your supervisor. The next step is to find the MSAR app on your mobile device and install it. You will click on the MSAR app icon and you will enter your login and password. And I recommend that you click on the Remember Me box just in case you enter your password incorrectly. You will receive an email from noreplyatsalesforce.com with a verification code. And then you will need to enter that code to log into the mobile app. That will basically complete the installation of the mobile app on your device. There's a couple of things that I want to mention before we go too far. And one thing is that your internet access is required to log in on the mobile app. And this is the first time or any time. If you were to click on the logout button on the mobile app, you will need to log in again, which will require internet access. However, the good thing about the app is that it's going to remember you. So your credentials are going to be cached on the mobile app for 60 days. And the next time you go into it, it's going to remember who you are. And it will allow you to enter data whether you're online or offline. Now, a key thing to note is that if you don't use the app for 60 days, and then you try to go into it, it's going to ask you who you are. And you will need internet access. The last thing I want to mention is we highly recommend that you protect your device with a password and that the screen locks after not being used. This is really key. This not only protects your personal email and your other information on your device, but it also protects the data that you're entering into this app.
this is just a quick recap of the different screens that you'll see after it's installed. You have your login screen, which is exactly the same as what you see on the portal. And then you will need to allow access to the application and click on the allow button. You will know that you did everything right when you get to the MSAR Terms and Conditions. And at this point, you would need to click on the Agree button to move forward. This concludes Part 1 of the End User Training for the MSAR Pilot. Please view part, the Part 2 training for details on how to use the mobile app and how to create the DSRs from the field.